It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Randy White and Mark Streed. Hello folks, welcome to Board Game Corner. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. This week we're taking a look at Legendary Encounters. It's a deck building game based on the four alien movies. The game supports one to five players. It plays in approximately 30 to 60 minutes. And because of the graphical nature of the game, it's recommended for players 17 years old and older. Definitely. So let's take a look at the alien invasion. All right, a quick look at the board. On this half, we have the sergeants and the... Okay, hold on a minute. You can't just jump into this game. No way. There's tons of setup to do. Now, unfortunately, Upper Deck did not include a master list with the game to help sort and ensure that all the 600 cards that you need to play the game are actually there. You may be familiar with games like uh, Seven Wonders, where the 150 cards have three different backs to help you sort the different ages. Or more recent games from Fantasy Flight, like Eldritch Horror, where the 250 right. to 300 cards have a, a, a 12 different backs yeah, to help exactly. you sort them. Uh, Upper Deck did not choose to include the master list to provide any primary or secondary sorting capabilities, except for some very small, small text. Small, tiny text. Tiny, tiny text. Tiny text. And uh, we appreciate what we found online from a person named uh, DZip, D-Zip yeah. that he has a one-page guide, a PDF, that not only helps you sort the cards, but it helps you ensure you have all the cards, which a lot of people have been missing cards from their uh, their base sets. Right. So, so if you say to me, Mark, hey, but this is a deck building game. No, I want to play this game. Yeah. I don't want to sit for hours sorting and sleeving. However, I did do that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a deck building game, what we got right out of the box initially was a a deck sorting game and a card yes. finding game. And a card finding yes. game, no doubt. So please, you know, out of the box, do not expect to just jump right into a game. For those of you who've played this at a game convention and have really enjoyed the game itself, you've had somebody there to set the game up, sort the cards, explain to you the rules. What we're trying to explain to you is and, and give you caution about is that the game out of the box where it's just you, the cards, and an instruction book might provide you a very different experience. Yes. Now, for those who are familiar with games <laughs> like Legendary Marvel and uh, the associated games, you probably know more what to look for, and your startup time will probably be much more more quick. Yeah. Uh, but for those of you who aren't familiar with that and don't have anybody to do the sorting for you, be prepared. Yes, be prepared, definitely. All right, so let's try to get back to the overview. All right, a quick look at the board. On this half, we have the sergeants and the HQ, and these are the primary places that you will be recruiting from. Uh, location cards go here, objectives here. The complex is where the hive cards, or the aliens, pass through to get to the combat zone. Operations have some special things that happen. Characters can be captured and put here, and you have to rescue. Now, in this half of the board, we have uh, where the hive deck is stored as they move across the complex. Uh, the hatchery, where you'll find nasty things like face huggers and chest bursters. Um, strikes is the primary attack by the aliens that you will draw cards from here. Barracks is what feeds the HQ for cards that you will recruit. And of course, sadly, your characters that die will end up here. Uh, this is where you discard hazardous events. And dead enemies, you like to fill this up as quick as possible. And of course, then you have a turn order uh, for everyone to reference. All right, let's take a look at the scenario. So we're playing Aliens, the second Alien movie. Um, location is Hadley's Hope. And the location cards all have hazards attached to them, which will be revealed from the Hive deck. So the Hive deck has more, more in it than just aliens encroaching on the complex. So there's particularly nasty things that happen here. So when a, high, when a hazard card is revealed, any one of those is activated. And they're activated in order, one, two, and three. Okay, what does it take to gain victory in this game? We have objective cards that go here. And they look like this. Uh, the Lost Colony, they mostly come at night, and who's laying the eggs? And they apply directly to the movie scenario you are playing. Um, they all have a, a separate objectives you have to achieve in order. Uh, here we kill. We have to kill three colonist hosts. Uh, we have to set up guns in two rooms of the complex. 
and we have to kill the queen. Also, each of these cards has an event that is particularly nasty at times. Here we have low visibility. Somebody's going to have to go out there and take into the hatchery. All very unpleasant. The way those are activated is via the hive deck. The hive deck you will reveal or pull an event, and that will trigger those individual items on whatever scenario or whatever objective you are currently trying to achieve. And of course, then the cards all go here in the objective pile and any completed objectives go underneath this pile. Okay, at the start of your turn, the hive gets to move first. So a new hive card is brought out, which forces all of these to shift. So the first one shifts down and these move over. And this comes into place here. Now, when it moves into the combat zone, the card is flipped over. And in this case, we have a nice little alien, Xenomorph Swarmer, and he has a terrible ability. When you reveal him, another Hive card is added to the complex. So we'll do that. Again, another Hive card is brought out, causing all of these to shift down. And then we flip this card. Ah, and this is one of the objectives, is a colonist host. We need to take it out. Now to the action phase. Here you'll play cards from your hand to recruit, kill aliens, and scan. So, in our hand we have some grunts, reconnaissance, and specialist. So we're going to play our reconnaissance, which allows to draw a card and scan any room for free. So we're going to do that. We're going to scan a room. And it looks like the, this is the colonist host, one of our objectives. Great. And we can draw another card. It gives us another grunt, three attacks. Ah, well, that's perfect because we have uh, a cost of two and a cost of one for in the combat zone. So we'll play two to kill the first alien. And his cost is located here. So he dies and goes into the dead enemy's pile. And then we'll pay one more to attack the colonist host, which is part of our objectives. So we'll put that over here. Now for the final three cards in our hand, we have specialists. And these are recruitment points. We have three available. So we're gonna play these cards. And it looks like all we can afford is Bishop. He's worth three. And down here in the bottom, you can see all the values of, of what it costs to recruit any of these characters. So we'll probably get Bishop, but, and we'll add him to our discard pile. However, you could recruit a Sergeant as well. There are always three points. And then once that's complete, then you go back to the barracks deck and replenish the HQ. Okay, let's take a quick look at Bishop again. Uh, Bishop, in this particular instance, his card has a class ability, which is designated by this icon. Uh, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, you draw two new cards. So, and this is an optional one. Not all of them are. So, if you activate it, you have the choice here. So, the way to activate it is you have a previous card that you have played during your turn, uh, like the sergeant here, who has that same icon. And once he's played, then you can go ahead and activate Bishop's uh, special ability in this card. The strike phase is next. So you draw strike cards based on however many enemies are in the combat zone. And these are particularly nasty. Uh, anything the aliens can do. Um, anything designated with a red number is not healable. You can never heal it during the course of the game. Um, you have double slashes, which draw another strike. Ugh. Uh, splash damage, which then the player, the next player draws a strike as well. And then, of course, something like a massive blow, with his, which is worth, costs five. Um, but there are many, many other terrible, terrible things in this strike deck. Then lastly is the cleanup phase. So if you had cards still in your hand, you would discard them. And then you draw six new cards from your deck. And then it's the next player's turn. Okay, so I do like this game, despite the out-of-the-box experience. <laughs> so, and I'm predisposed to liking it because I do enjoy the alien story and the movies. Well, at least the first two movies I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I do enjoy 
uh, the different characters that are running through the different stories, and that the narrative is really well done. Um, it, it keeps me engaged. Uh, there's definitely a high level of tension in the game. Um, everybody's Oh, you know, helping each other out. Really well done cooperative Cooper- game. Cooperation is excellent in this game. Yeah. What um, I think it shines in this game is the ability to help each other, whether you're recruiting new members to your to your deck or whether Definitely. you're uh, killing aliens. Yeah. Um, that ability to help each other, even when it's not your turn, makes a huge difference. Yeah. And some of the things we didn't really talk about or cover was there's a decks that are like the hatchery deck where – as you get further into the game, you may get a face hugger. Mm. Then, if someone on your team or your next player doesn't help you, or you can't help yourself get rid of this face hugger, then you get a chest burster that goes into your discard pile. And when that pops up, then it's it's over. You're out. Well, you're not totally out. You're not totally you out. You can become an alien yeah. and start killing your friends. Yeah, which is pretty interesting, actually. So everybody can stay engaged even if you your main character goes out. So there's a lot of neat things about this game. Another thing um, is the... Um, Agenda cards. Uh, there's secret agendas that can happen. Uh, uh, there's good ones and there's bad ones where you're a traitor among in in the midst of all your fellow players. So there's a lot to like in this game. Um, I just wish the out of box experience yep. had been better because I do feel that it tainted my overall at least initial feel. But now that we've color coded and sorted and sleeved. Uh, and sleeved the game is something I will play over and over, and I have teenage daughters, and they love it. Um, even my wife likes it. So uh, it's a really fun and engaging game. Agreed. For me, the game is reminiscent of a fruit called durian, which uh, those people who are familiar with it. It's an Asian fruit that has an extremely strong and for some very repulsive smell initially, but the fruit in the center is very very sweet, sweet and yeah, people exactly. really love it. And unfortunately, we spend our first couple of hours with <clears throat> Legendary Encounters uh, very frustrated, yeah. very upset. Uh, <laughs> it's not just because uh, there weren't different colored backs, but uh, we've already mentioned the very yeah. small text, which sometimes was... Uh, to, to help you sort it. Yeah, and not knowing if we had all the cards or not. Exactly. And some, <laughs> um, they, they mix iconography sometimes. For example, yeah. 39 of the 40 cards in the strike deck have a nice little red webbing at the top, mm. top and we were looking for the 40th one. Turns out the 40th one doesn't have an iconography at all. Right. Um, the text at the bottom uh, sometimes is flavor text, sometimes is for sorting, and sometimes it's the copyright. It's the copyright. Not even legible. And not even le- yeah. You're like, what does that say? <laughs> so, so things like that made it very frustrating. Sometimes a right. number with, with a slash behind it indicates uh, the amount of damage something does to you, right. and sometimes it's the monster's health points. Exactly. So um, those are all the shell of Aliens Encounter. And yeah. I use durian uh, as the example because for many people, <laughs> the fruit inside is just worth putting up with the smell. Exactly. And um, yep. for us, we're really enjoying the base game. Yep. As I we have yep. mentioned before, the cooperation aspect of it is great. The different movies, because you have different decks for the different movies, oh, yeah. and uh, your, your characters, the people you recruit also have different skills and different uh, dynamics as you play them difference. together. And we can't even show them all. There's so many. No, no, there's so many. So. Uh, we don't even like Aliens 3 and 4. The right. game it makes, makes those excellent, excellent playable. Yeah. playable fun. Yeah, so uh, you, you, can, you can get that bad taste out of your head after seeing those movies and play the game. <laughs> so I have a lot of recommendations for playing the game, but again, uh, a lot of caution. I, I don't think I'd just give this to a friend and say, have fun, yeah. unless he knew what to expect. Right, exactly. At least get them acclimated before you right. give them a copy. Right. And and Mark went the extra mile. He bought a bunch of extra sleeves and put yep. the extra time in and found the, the master list on the web. So um, that's those are the miles we had to go through yeah. to actually get but to a very enjoyable game. But they made a world game. of difference. They did. Because they did. it's really increased my enjoyment. Yeah. And I I'm, it's just a really a blast to play. We'll play so. it frequently in the future. Yep. Okay, now for our verdict. So this is the first time that I felt like we need a new category on yeah. our scale. On our scale. Yeah. So I, and maybe we'll add it, but I think we need an out of box experience. So and in this case, unfortunately, um, Lesnar Encounters gets a one out of four corners for me. But putting that aside, uh, the gameplay itself is just really fun, and I've really enjoyed it. And I, I hesitated between a three and a three five, but I think I'm going with the three five out of four corners. Now I rated it a little bit lower in a couple of areas. Uh, one of them is, them is components. I love the mat, and mat is great, and the artwork on the cards is pretty good as well. Uh, however, the 
the difficulty not only in the initial setup, but also in the teardown and setup between games could be very frustrating if you're not willing to go to the extra mile and extra yeah. expense of sleeving. So because of that, I rated the components a little bit lower. Also, I rated ease of learning a little bit lower because of the ambiguity in some of the text. Yeah, definitely. And so, but I, I remember though, I think at least it's consistent ambiguity. It's consistently <laughs> ambiguous. Yes. And so, and so, so we, you, over time, you you agree that that's what this thing means, and so you play right. by that rule. But there can still be some question about True. that. There is. Uh, but overall, I rated it three three corners out of four. Uh, and so because we're enjoying the game and yeah, despite, those, despite those efficiency or deficiencies, if you're willing to go the extra mile of sorting and sleeving, I think you'll have a great time with this game. Yeah. So you should check it out. And definitely if you've, you have someone in your gaming group has played these type of games before, try to sync up with them and have you have them help you out for the first Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yes. So that's our review this week. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, we'll see, see you at, at the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>